Hi everybody. This video is about standard iterative learning control, ILC. How do we design it and why is it so useful? Well, first of all, let's start with answering the question, why should we use ILC or standard frequency domain ILC? Well, it gives you a much better performance in case of tracking systems where your set point is no debris a predetermined repeatedly supplied trajectory. So every time I make the same movement in the same time and also my process does not change. In that situation, in that case, ILC frequency domain ILC is very useful to get an optimal performance. Examples where we could use ILC or where it is used. For instance, in all point-to-point -point movements, systems with these kind of movements like pick and place machines or in inkjet printers where the paper step is a um, repeatedly same um, position, a step we make over and over again, the same step over and over again. Or the carriage movement, which is uh, always the same movement. Or you could... Um, think of scanners or H-drive positioning systems. So all the systems which have a point-to-point -point movement which keeps on repeating the same movement over and over again. So what are the ILC characteristics? Um, it's, as I said, useful for repetitive equal set points. There are more complex ILC procedures for varying set points, but that is not a standard frequency domain ILC, which I'm going to discuss in this video. Um, a good aspect, a really good aspect of this kind of ILC is that it does not have a direct impact on stability because it is so-called trial-based. I uh, will come to that in a couple of minutes. And you can always guarantee convergence of the ILC loop if the design rules, which I'm going to explain, if they are met. So how does it look like? This is a complete setup, a complete block diagram of a system with ILC. This is what you probably recognize, which is a standard feedback loop. Here we have our set point over here, a set point for position because this is a um, position um, feedback system. This is my discrete controller and this is my process or my plan, discrete sized. And of course, this is my feedback loop. And added to this feedback loop, we have standard feed forwards over here. That is not necessary for ILC, but it's always useful to implement these because um, all the knowledge you have and all the knowledge you implement in your system could only help in getting a quick and very good response of your system, of course. So I have um, added a standard acceleration and a standard velocity feed forward um, added to my feedback loop. And this is where it's all about. This is my ILC loop. This is my ILC add-on, so my iterative learning control add-on. And this is what I'm going to discuss in the next slides. So let's look to this feedback system and that ILC loop over here. This is what you recognize, this is my set point, this is the output, and this is the error. And here the index K is a, um, a value which we use for every run or every movement which we make. So every movement, every um, position, uh, what we uh, in this example make, uh, we call that run number k. And every movement has a fixed, um, fixed time, which is constant. And what is really important, in between these runs, the system is standing still. So, for instance, let's look uh, to a um, system in which we, in an inkjet printer, position paper, then we have a step. And then my paper is standing still. I have a step again. It's standing still. And in that standing uh, still, in that a time where my system is standing still, I do my ILC uh, performance calculation. So all the calculations uh, which are necessary to perform or to calculate a new feed forward are calculated in between these runs. So every run K, that complete error is measured and capture. For instance, when we have a runtime of one second and we have a sample time of one millisecond, it means that I capture every run thousand error samples. So these thousand error samples, a vector of every uh, of um, thousand error samples, are the input for my ILC loop over here. 
in between these runs my errors are filtered by a so-called learning filter my learning filter l in which we are uh, which we are going to discuss in a couple of minutes how we are going to design that learning filter and the output of that complete learning filter and everything which is added to it that is my new feed forward for the next run what we also see in this ILC setup is that we place a low pass filter over here and that is what we call a robustness filter um, the output of that um, robustness filter that Q filter is the output which we are going to use for the next run so for my uh, new feed forward so now we are going to look into all the steps which are necessary um, to define and design this ILC um, add-on so the ILC um, feed forward loop um, first of all when you um, really stick to all the design rules you uh, can guarantee that convergence is met so then this mathematic calculation is always met so you don't have to worry about well do I uh, comply to this rule yes you comply when you use the standard rules for designing a ILC add-on what we didn't discuss but which is also um, uh, added in that ILC loop is a so-called gamma gain over here and that is what we call the learning rate and that defines how quickly this ILC loop will learn and the higher this value will be the maximum value is one the fastest this ILC loop will be but at the cost of a much more noisier loop so then um, it might be the case that uh, in the end your ILC loop is also uh, re reacting and responding to um, errors in this um, uh, error over here which is not which are not caused by the standard um, reference and output over here so summarize what we are doing is everyone run we capture the error over here and we translate that in a new better feed forward for um, the, the for the closed uh, for the control loop over here so how do we do that first of all let's look what happens over here this error is the input for my lc loop and this is the feed forward contribution of my ilc loop to that feedback loop so first of all let's look to the um, transfer function of this um, feed forward input um, towards the error over here and that is nothing more than the standard rules which we also use for a standard feedback system which is defined as h over here which is which are all the blocks in the forward path from this input to that output divided by one plus all the blocks which are in the loop over here so let's have a look these um, from here to here this is the only block which is in the forward path so P the process transfer function is the only block in the forward path so H my um, so-called process sensitivity is equal to P divided by 1 plus all the book blocks and the loop which is 1 plus P times C so from the output of my ILC controller back to the error the transfer function equals P over 1 plus P times C and that is what we call the process sensitivity now we are going to define the learning filter and in fact that learning filter is the inverse of the process sensitivity so you could say well by um, inverting this um, process sensitivity function we have that learning filter but you should um, yeah the, you should take the, the following um, sy system rules into account um, you have to be sure or you that you have a really good model of this system and um, of course you make an error and all these errors are um, transferred back into that learning filter but there is another important aspect why you can't do that directly you can't uh, directly um, invert that process sensitivity and that is because that process sensitivity is strictly proper and that means that it has more poles and zeros which guarantees causality so cause 
leading to an effect. So when you invert that process sensitivity, you have not, you don't have a guaranteed causality anymore. And uh, to overcome this problem, um, we are using a so-called zero-phase error tracking control algorithm developed by a mister from Japan, Mr. Tomozuka, in 1988. And what it does, it um, creates a learning filter in a way that that causality is guaranteed again. So uh, don't worry about how this algorithm works. It's um, uh, the MATLAB code of this algorithm um, is uh, on the internet. You can find it very easily and you can use that algorithm to define that learning filter. But in fact, it's still um, inverting that process sensitivity, but um, in a way that causality is guaranteed uh, again. Now we have to design a low pass filter, a Q filter over here. And that is because my process has a low order behavior. So it has a low pass filter behavior. And when we make the inverse of my process sensitivity, my learning filter has a high pass filter um, uh, 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 performance, so to say. Well, that is not that very good for disturbances because disturbances which are always or mainly in the high frequencies, they will be amplified. So that's why we have to create and to design a low pass filter. And you could use a standard, for instance, uh, second order low pass filter, which we implement over here. Um, the thing is that um, first of all, you have to be, uh, you have to define the bandwidth of that um, low pass filter, that Q filter, and uh, a rule of thumb is that you define the bandwidth uh, of that Q filter equal to the bandwidth of your open loop system. But the thing is that when you implement a standard low pass filter over here, that filter has always a phase shift. Remember when you have a second order system, it always have a, has a phase shift and for higher frequencies, it goes up to minus 180 degrees. But that is not what we want because we, we want to uh, compensate all these samples, sample by sample, at the right point in time. And that's why we have to use a MATLAB function, which is called the filled fill function. And what this MATLAB function does is it guarantees or it creates a low pass filter with no um, phase shifting whatsoever, so with a phase shift of zero. And that is caused by the fact that this filter moves the filter input from left to right and then from right to left through the filter. So the phase shift is really zero. So we're going to use filled filled this function for creating that low pass filter. So then we have um, the last block over here, which is the learning rate gamma. And um, I explained it earlier, uh, a higher value of a gamma. Uh, and gamma has to be somewhere between 0 and 1, creates a fast learning uh, filter, but it will be more nervous. So a very slow, uh, a very low gamma will result in a very slow ILC loop. So a really good starting point is to go in between the uh, minimum and the maximum value. So let's say the learning rate is equal to 0 0.5. So let's start with that value. So summarize, we are going to define based, of our, based on our model, we are going to find the process sensitivity, which equals P over 1 plus P times C. Then we are going to define the learning filter and we use the zero phase error tracking controller algorithm for it. And the input for that filter is the numerator and the denominator of that process sensitivity over here. And the filter outputs the numerator and the denominator of the learning filter. Then we choose the learning rate. Um, we set that to 0 0.5. We design a low pass filter, for instance, second uh, order filter over here. And we discretize it, for instance, by mean of Tustin, and we will use filled filled for implementation. So what we are doing now is when we have designed that filter, we perform one run. So we um, set that step, for instance, a thousand samples, and we measure and capture that error over here. And that error is the input for my learning filter over there. So in between these runs, when um, the system is not moving at all, this error, this captured error is fed to this learning filter 
and through and the output of the learning filter is the input for the learning rate over here and remember this is made by using the zero phase error tracking controller procedure um, when we have um, the output of my learning rate um, we define the input of my low pass filter q as the error over here uh, multiplied with the learning filter and the learning rate over here and we add to that the previous um, feed forward contribution over here and that is the input for my Q filter so for my low pass filter and then we use filled filled for filtering that data over here and the input for my um, filled filled procedure is are uh, the numerator of my discretized Q filter the denominator of that discretized Q filter and the input data over here and then we get the filtered output over there and that is the output which is um, provided over here as the input a new feed forward contribution for the next run so that is how it works so um, we keep on repeating this over and over again until you think the error is small enough and then it's really wise to freeze that feed forward contribution otherwise um, your learning your ILC loop your learning filter could react on yeah um, 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 uh, noise which is always present of course in that error and the rule of thumb is when you apply the standard rules for instance having a learning rate of 0 0.5 it takes let's say 5 to 10 runs before the feed forward has been learned and the result the error is small enough so this is the complete setup and um, this is a, um, um, a model which I have designed in which I can demonstrate um, how learning feed forward iterative learning control uh, will work. I will demonstrate that in the next video. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.